This is Newsmax TV. I'm Ashley Martella. We're pleased to be joined by former U.S. Representative Vito Fossella. For 12 years, he represented New York's 13th Congressional District, which includes Staten Island and part of Brooklyn. He was the only Republican in Congress from New York City and had very high scores for his votes from the American Conservative Union. Right now, he's Chief Operating Officer of Superfund, which is a group of companies. Superfund companies are privately owned and together form a consortium of investment companies specializing in trading and offering Superfund Managed Futures Funds. Welcome to Newsmax, Representative. Thank you, Ashley. Good to be with you. Big news lately about the upcoming trials of confessed 9-11 mastermind Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and other accused terrorists. Attorney General Holder, one of them tried in Lower Manhattan, not far from the World Trade Center bombings. Now, the Justice Department is said to be considering other locations in the face of overwhelming opposition, including from New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. What are your thoughts on the situation, sir? Well, I think these, uh, these decisions to relocate or move the trial uh, from downtown Manhattan are long overdue. Um, you know, just by way of background, um, Downtown Manhattan uh, is just a few blocks from where these terrorists attacked this nation on September 11, 2001. Uh, the decision was made to try uh, one of the masterminds and, and for a total of five of these war criminals in a civilian court. And they wanted to do it uh, initially uh, just a few blocks from the Trade Center site. So on many different levels, uh, many of us have argued not just for days but for, for months how ridiculous the decision is. One is that uh, these are individuals who declared war in this country, who attacked this country, and thus should be treated as war criminals, and uh, not as ordinary uh, citizens or civilian defendants. Secondly, they should not be afforded the constitutional rights that are, uh, that are guaranteed to every American citizen. Uh, these individuals uh, clearly declared war, they wanted war, and as such should be subject to what has been in place for more than 200 years, trying these individuals before a military tribunal. Third, as a practical matter, um, you know, the mayor and the police commissioner announced a couple of weeks ago and more recently put a final touch on the number that security costs alone for the trial could exceed $500 million. It's $500 million of taxpayer money to try five terrorists, um, which again, on, 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 for different reasons, is just ludicrous. Uh, not to mention the fact the impact it would have had on the quality of life, on, on the residents and the business owners in downtown Manhattan. You know, the issue, there were many in uh, New York who said, well, let the federal government pick it up. That's not the point. That's a smokescreen. Uh, no one across this country should have to pay for the security costs in excess of $500 million uh, for these terrorists. Now the Justice Department has said or indicated they're going to reevaluate and look elsewhere. Well, if, if that's true, that's welcome news, but it may be only a half a victory. The, the main issue or an important issue still is that these individuals should be tried before a military tribunal. Do you have any idea why the Obama administration appears to be resisting any military tribunal? It, it boggles my mind. Uh, there are those who uh, just feel that uh, be, we should undo almost 200 years of, of jurisprudence, of precedence for treating war criminals and trying them. I happen to think that it's worked pretty well for the last 200 years. They are avowed warriors. They want to be uh, declared warriors. Uh, therefore, let's treat them as such. So I don't know, I think, from the perhaps the uh, bravado or almost a, like an arrogance to it of declaring that they should be treated like you or anyone else across this country with the same rights. Let's think about what could happen in a civilian trial. Uh, they could uh, uh, reveal sensitive military information, national security information that could further weaken uh, this country. You know, we had a similar situation in 1993. The, the same group tried to blow up the World Trade Center. Uh, they failed the first time. People died. They failed, but they came back. But during the trial of the masterminds of that attack revealed some very sensitive military information, among which included the list of al-Qaeda operatives that you know, our intelligence uh, forces had tried to track down. These are the types of things that a civilian trial uh, would reveal. I think it would make this country less safe. A civilian trial in downtown Manhattan would make the city less safe because you'd have to deploy police personnel from across the city. 
Um, but at the core of it, we've tried to get the, uh, the administration uh, to change its mind. It may change its venue, uh, but the big issue still remains is uh, try these individuals before a military tribunal. You had the Christmas underpants bomber who didn't bring down that Northwest Airlines jet, but did manage to breach security to get on the plane. In your opinion, should some heads have rolled over that? You would think. I mean, I happen to be a big supporter of our um, intelligence uh, personnel around the world. They're on the front lines and they've kept this country safe. Um, so I think the real issue should be, uh, in my opinion, the real issue should continue to focus upon those who want to bring harm to, to our people. Uh, that we should recognize that there are still terrorists out there who, who don't like us, who hate us, as a matter of fact, who hate our way of life, who want to destroy freedom, who want to kill innocent people. And that was em evidenced most recently by the, the, uh, the, the bomber on uh, the plane around Christmas. Uh, so the, we need to show as a country that we're serious about treating these terrorists as war criminals, which is why these two issues go hand in hand. The, uh, the, the bomber on the Christmas uh, Day uh, Christmas Day bomber was lawyered up almost immediately. So rather than try to treat him again as a terrorist as we should treat the mastermind of 9-11, we're basically uh, invoking the same constitutional rights that I don't think they're, they should be afforded. Yeah, he talked 50 minutes and then clammed up as soon as he got Mirandized. That is correct. Right. And now that how, why that is relevant to the 9-11 trials, the Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, is... Uh, he may argue, and I would be surprised if he didn't, that he was not read Miranda rights or that uh, certain rights that should have been given to him were, not, were denied to him, and therefore they should dismiss this trial. Now, the Attorney General has said to the question of, well, what happens in the event that if he raises these legal issues that, um, that he will be acquitted, which I think the response was something to the effect of that will not happen. Well, how is the chief law enforcement officer in this country basically predicting what the outcome of a trial will be? Why have a trial? Um, so it raises so many unanswered questions. I think it creates a dangerous precedent. Uh, it sends a signal to the rest of the world that we're going to almost treat terrorists with, with kid gloves. Uh, I think we need to remain serious, remain focused, remain vigilant, and understand that there are people around this world that want to destroy us, and we will not let that happen. Is it a mistake for Obama to stop using words terrorist and terrorism or the phrase war on terror? I think you have to call it like you see it. They, are ter they want to be called terrorists. They want to be called warriors. They do not like the United States of America. They do not like uh, the beliefs and freedoms and liberties that we cherish. They want to see them ended, and they're willing to go to war to do so. Most vividly, that was demonstrated on September 11th, not too far from uh, where we are right now, and it was in downtown Manhattan, it was at the Pentagon, and if they had had their way, it would have been more damage and more innocent lives lost. They are terrorists. They should be recognized and acknowledged as such. So you think it's a mistake that Obama basically struck that from the dictionary? I would prefer to see uh, our commander-in-chief uh, use the word terrorist because that's exactly what they are. All right, turning to another topic now, there are some rumors circulating that you might make another run for Congress. Any truth to that? <laughs> And I, I had a wonderful uh, privilege of serving the people of Staten Island and Brooklyn uh, for almost a dozen years. It's the greatest honor you can have in public life. And um, while I'm flattered that people have, uh, have asked me to, to, to run, uh, there are no plans to do so. Okay, but you wouldn't rule it out completely. <laughs> I have no plans whatsoever to do so. Vito Fasella, thanks so much for speaking with us here at Newsmax, and good luck to you, sir. Ashley, it's great to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV. Sarah Palin's new book, Going Rogue in American Life, will be released on November 17th. You can be among the first to get your copy. Check out our incredible free offer for Sarah's new book. Just go to Newsmax.com and click on the top banner for this great offer. Act today.